Lots of issues and news today. First of all, the president is in India, a truly great country. I visited India a number of years ago. It has a huge population. One of its languages is English, a tremendous potential. It's a great buffer, not just to China, but to Pakistan. And it's something that should have been a long, done a long time ago to firm up relations with India because they are, in fact, adverse to radical elements of the Muslim world. They have the largest Muslim population in the world. They know how to contain terrorism and things like that. And I commend the president for doing that. He gave a press conference this morning. He was attacked, as usual, by Jim Acosta, you know, in foreign soil, absolutely despicable by CNN. And I might remind everybody, go to freedomwatchusa.org, see our lawsuits against CNN for Sheriff Joe Arpaio and for others. They need to be held accountable. Our leftist media strike force is crucial, and we are the ones that's carrying the water here. Nobody else bringing one defamation lawsuit after another. It's a growth industry. I will not turn the other cheek. Jesus didn't turn the other cheek either, I might add. Uh, you know, the Romans are gone. The high priests are gone. People have to pay a price for what they do. And this is exactly what we're doing at Freedom Watch. So support us at freedomwatchusa.org and our leftist media strike force. Secondly, let's talk about claims that the president is purging people in the administration. He needs to purge people. He needs to get rid of them. These people are not loyal. They're stabbing him in the back. Just recently, the intelligence community did it again, claimed that Russia is trying to get him elected. They weren't satisfied, obviously, with their failure in the impeachment proceeding and conviction proceeding in the Senate. So now they're going to do this. And it's perfectly proper for him to have somebody as the head of director of national intelligence who is not an intelligence spook. In fact, it's better not to have someone like that. We see what goes on at the Defense Department, civilian rule with the Secretary of Defense frequently. You need somebody who's not part of this establishment, who's not part of the deep state. The president should be commended for cleaning house and getting people in charge of the intelligence community that aren't, in fact, corrupted by the compromised system. His criticism of Sotomayor and Ginsburg on the Supreme Court, he should also extend that to Chief Justice John Roberts, who is a closet liberal, closet leftist, I might add. Do not think that because the Supreme Court issues decisions and because it's the Supreme Court of the land that it's not politicized. They're not above the law. They're probably more political than even the lower courts. And that's why Sotomayor and Ginsburg, who have made very nasty prejudicial remarks against the president in the past, should have to recuse themselves from cases. Of course, they won't do that. But it's good that the president is sensitizing the American people to the fact that particularly our federal judiciary is so highly politicized that in a case that touches on any political issue or issue involving government, rarely, if ever, do you get a neutral, independent decision. Contrary to what Chief Justice Roberts claimed, when a judge on the ninth, on the uh, U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California, John Tiger, who not coincidentally is the son of communist Michael Tiger, who sits on disciplinary panels concerning yours truly in the District of Columbia, a communist, an avowed communist, and you might note what Bernie Sanders has been saying about Castro. Tiger actually has pictures of himself proudly with the Castros and thank you notes. These are the kinds of people who sit on the bench frequently. And it's good the president's raising these issues because I've been raising them for decades. It's why I founded Judicial Watch, watching judges. We have a corrupted federal judiciary. There are some good ones, very few. I maybe have met three or four in my entire life when it comes to these political cases. And I've been a lawyer for going on 43 years. This is an important issue for the president to raise. And we will need a new Third Continental Congress. We're going to hold it next year in Philadelphia, my birthplace, because we need to change, among other things, the way judges on the federal bench are selected and come up with a way to remove them. They have lifetime tenure. They have what they claim is immunity. They really don't. But that needs to be clarified. And we need a constitutional amendment because they feel as if they can act as if they're above the law. And they do. And it's why I'm trying to file as many cases these days as possible in state courts where judges are accountable to the people, where they can be voted out of office, where they're not there for life and actually have to be 
even handed. And in fact, they even have to be nice to the lawyers in front of them, because in federal courts, frequently the judges aren't even nice to those lawyers because they resent the fact that those lawyers are making more money than they are. So that's an issue which is very, very important. And of course, we come to our friend Bernie Sanders, a vehement anti-Semite. I talked about that yesterday. Someone who has attacked APAC, the lobbying group, uh, and attacked Israel. Someone who accepts support from the vile anti-Semites, Linda Sarsour, Ilham Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and others. Someone who is a Jew, not even in name only, because his father changed his name from a Jewish family name to a non-Jewish family name, Sanders. That's not a Jewish family name. He tries to hide the fact that he's Jewish. And he's a disgrace. And yesterday I called upon people in the Jewish community at Freedom Watch. We have a coalition of the Jewish right, which also includes Christians. As you know, I'm a Jewish Christian. I believe in Jesus. I'm very proud of my heritage. I'm a Zionist. I believe that Israel belongs to Jews and Christians, as bequeathed to us by God, our God, not Allah. And this is something that needs to be pushed because it's Jewish people themselves that need to police uh, in a legal and peaceful way, what goes on in their own community. And there are people in Hollywood. I named them yesterday. We want to do a Hollywood tribute to Israel. We want to use those people like Adam Sandler and and Scarlett Johansson and Gal Gadot, uh, an Israeli actress, very prominent these days, and others. Barbara Streisand, by the way, is a supporter of Israel, believe it or not. Uh, She supports the Israeli Defense Forces. And there is a philanthropist in Los Angeles by the name of Chaim Saban, very prominent, who does an event every year to support the Israeli Defense Forces. And he himself has complained recently to The Hollywood Reporter that he can't find fellow Jews to support what he's doing out there. By the way, he's a liberal. He's a, he's a good liberal in that regard. So, so this is something that we need to pursue, and we need to fight communism. And communism, you know, I really take obje- uh, exception when people are talking about Bernie Sanders as a socialist. You know, they're doing that because it's politically appropriate. But I, and I also commend Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who recently called Bernie a communist on the stage. That's what he is. I don't support Bloomberg. I don't tell people who to vote for him, the head of a nonprofit. I can in my personal capacity. But Bloomberg had it right. Bernie Sanders is a communist. And there is a huge, huge uptick of communism in this country. It's on college campuses. That the communism, of course, invented by Karl Marx, furthered by Trotsky, people recently in modern history like Saul Alinsky and others. Uh, this needs to be fought because it is a very destructive system, which rather than worshiping God, our God worships government and the state. And this is extremely dangerous. So all these things are out there today, swirling about the stock market, you know, Collapsed yesterday because of the coronavirus. That's something that needs to be dealt with. The president seems to have a grip on that. But this is a potential mega problem, bigger than even an accidental atomic explosion. We face many problems today. And we need a strong president. We need a strong Freedom Watch to be your private Justice Department because we don't have a Justice Department with Attorney General Bill Barr. We've seen that, how he's taken a dive on prosecuting criminals, even worse than Roger Stone, and you know how I feel about that. So that's my message for today. Send this podcast to everybody you can think of. We need to educate the American people, and I thank Radio America for giving me a voice and letting me tell the truth as I see it. You can also find it, you know, on iPhone. You can find, excuse me, on iTunes. You can find it on Patreon. You can find it on Facebook. Uh, You can find it on Spotify. Please spread the word far and wide because we need clear talk today. I want to thank you. I want to thank your family and and patriots. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America and God save America. Thank you for listening to me. I'll be back tomorrow with another podcast. 